Ever spend good money on a new project car just to find out that you immediately have to tear it apart to do basic preventative maintenance? Well, kind of basic and not really preventative. What's up? I'm Tom. I am a car guy. I've always been a car guy and for the better part of 20 years, that is what has been the driving factor in my life. I've had a lot of really cool jobs building airplanes, working on airplanes, fixing airplanes, uh, a bunch of other generally interesting jobs that some paid well, some paid not great. But the point of each one of them was, is they paid for me to screw with cars. And that is what I'm about. I've gone back to school a bunch of times just to learn more stuff so that I could do more things with cars. CAD, CAM, rapid prototyping, composites, machining, um, you name it, there's a course for it, I've taken it. And not as a prerequisite for a job or towards a, a career path, but just so that I could do cars better. And because I hate paying people to work on my stuff, and I hate paying for other people to develop things that I can just do. So if that's interesting to you, that's what this is gonna be about. I'm gonna do it either way. If you wanna hang out in the garage and watch me talk about this and do stupid stuff like go drifting, go to lapping days, go drag racing, go to casual drag racing, uh, build some cars, uh, build a truck maybe, I don't know. I've always kinda of wanted a street dirt bike, so maybe I'll do something like that. I, I tend to have multiple things going at once. Um, it, it's very rare that I have one car and the only reason I have one car in the garage right now is because I just moved into this place and I cleared out a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to see an example of the kind of stuff I've done in the past, there's a link to an overview to my last build right here below me. And uh, if you want to give that a click after you watch this and just kind of see, you know, the extent of how far things can go. Um, that build was a LS swapped. 350Z, and it went pretty great. It was a great drift car. Uh, it's very fast, very functional, worked awesome. But then I moved to Texas, and it's hot here, and I wanted air conditioning, and I wanted something that wasn't quite so focused because drift cars are awesome at drifting and horrible at everything else. They're just, they're a miserable machine to drive in any other way when they're that focused. So I set out with the goal of doing something not so tightly reined in. I wanted something that had air conditioning. I wanted to have a GM V8 or the ability to take a GM V8. And I demanded to have a 6060, which is the upgraded T56. I've had several LS swap cars, done a bunch of V8 swaps and the original F-Body GTO T56, uh, same with the CTS V56. Um, it shifts like crud. It just does. It, it's like uh, a stick in a box of mud and you have to try and hit the rocks every time you're moving a gear. The 6060 is amazing. Clink, 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 works great. So I set up with those in mind and I decided I was going to do a C6 Corvette. I've never owned a Corvette. I've never been a Corvette guy and I have no interest in Corvettes other than the things that they bring, which is the V8 I wanted. Um, I bought an LS3 car because I think the LS3 is the best GM motor, bar none. I think it eclipses the LS7 and a whole bunch of different ways that we'll get into. Um, it has a 6060, so that's awesome. Super strong, super good shifting transmission. Uh, the transmission's in the back of the car, which is new to me. It has a transaxle, which is cool until you have to do a clutch, which I immediately had to do. So just getting at the clutch to check it out in this thing was an ordeal in itself. It, required me basically buying a lift, having a buddy come up to install it, thanks Chris. I, well, he didn't, well, to help me install it, but really he was the driving force. I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I can do it now. Uh, the instructions were bad. Uh, after buying the lift, I had to spend even more money on a very expensive transmission jack, which I don't know how I could have done without to drop this rear subframe. Now dropping the rear subframe, I'm sure could be accomplished without a lift. If you wanted to drop it onto some two by fours and lift the car up, but that sounds miserable. 
and everything in a Corvette comes out the bottom. The engine comes out the bottom, everything comes out the bottom. So what I did is I dropped the transaxle on the rear cradle with the entire suspension intact, the torque tube, and then all the way down here just so I could access this bell housing. Now, from here this doesn't look too bad, but it is nearly impossible to get at the top bolts on this bell housing. Now it's normally pretty difficult to get at the top bolts on a bell housing, but this one in particular, I had to take and hang the front subframe down as low as I possibly could right here. Boop. And I have it snugged back up now. And then I had to support it with a giant jack stand just so that I could hang the motor down enough to reach the top bolt to remove the bell housing so that I could pull the old clutch out and give it a look. Now you can see that this pressure plate is, is still in pretty good shape. Um, it still has the factory grooves in it, which are pretty normal, except for on the outside here. It's really smooth and it has tons of hot spotting just from the clutch being heated over and over and over again. Um, it's the same story with the flywheel that I removed. It's in good shape other than the hot spotting and the outside of it is real smooth. Um, and then when we come over here to the clutch disc, and this is just a factory um, luck, is the, the OE manufacturer clutch disc for an LS3. And there's still quite a bit of material. It's not fresh by any means, but I've put worse clutches back into cars and had them work. But what this has is really uneven wear all the way around it. And so since the wear is so uneven, I imagine due to the previous owner, who, like I said, was a very nice older gentleman, driving with his foot on the clutch, um, the face doesn't engage evenly or smoothly, allowing the uh, motor to spin it um, when it develops full torque at 3,500, 4,000 RPM. Uh, it's awesome having a Summit Superstore local. Um, it's not super close, it's, it's a little bit of a drive, but I could just go down and pick up a OEM LS7 clutch, flywheel, a pressure plate, throw out bearing, pilot bearing and everything. And they had it in stock and I got to walk around and look at all the cool stuff and, you know, feel my wallet lighten just walking through the doors. And so with that, I installed it with some ARP studs or ARP bolts, excuse me, for the uh, brand new clutch, flywheel, pressure plate and pilot bearing. And then I have replaced the throw out bearing, even though, you know, there's probably nothing wrong with the old one. But with these slaves and throw out bearings, if you have to remove them, you have to pull this entire assembly back out again. And it's a pretty big pain in the butt. So I also installed a remote bleeder line so that for servicing because the fluid tends to cook in these things. I can just do that without having to pull this all the way apart. From the factory, the only way to service this is to yank the transmission back apart and that's your bleeder just so that you can bleed the slave. And that sucks. That's a huge pain and I don't want to do it. So screw that. So that's where I'm at right now. So now you're caught up to date with where the car is, um, what's been going on just since I've owned it in the thousand miles. Uh, coming up, um, I have some Z06 brakes right here, which are gonna be huge because the factory brakes are puny and weak and they overheat easily and I need to fix that. I've already done Z06 sway bars. I actually bought a, a lot of a parted out Z06. Um, I have coilovers coming. I have some parts for angle mods coming. I will be building a dual caliper kit. Uh, I'll be building my own hydraulic independent e-brake setup that's independent of the existing brake structure. And it should be fun. Uh, do some burnouts. It'll be a good time. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if this is cool and it interests you, I promise you that the videos can only get better from here because this isn't great and, you know, nowhere to go but up, right? I just wanted to get the first one out and see if uh, anybody would watch. So I will start cranking on the second video. Um, gonna get that transmission slammed in, start working on the brakes, and then uh, hopefully some more parts will come in and the car will get faster and start tuning and breaking stuff and running into things and getting in trouble and doing all the things that is the reason why we own cars. So if you wanna watch some more, there's buttons down here that you can do things with. That'll tell you when I post another video. Um, if, if you like this, share it. Uh, it. I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna put something up once a week. I'm going to put something else up once a week. So once a week you'll get a video and then once a week you might get something shorter. So I'm going to try and aim for the 15, 10, 15 minute mark on my videos. Uh, 20 minutes, it's a little bit long. This one's going to be extra wordy, a lot more talking than I would do because, well, what do you want to see? So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any comments or ideas or things you'd like to see, if you have any questions or even just general tech questions, just go ahead and throw them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.